of students. Welcome to Bible Life. Uh, October. October already. Can't believe it. Um, today we are going to be in Luke chapter 8, uh, starting at verse 28. Don't open your Bibles there now. Uh, the announcements I have for you uh, as of right now are come on Wednesday nights if you can. Uh, we are having small groups. Hopefully if you're not able to attend in person, you've been joining on the live stream and on Zoom. Um, been cool to see all of y'all jumping on the Zoom small groups. Uh, been encouraged by that. Um, and today there is no middle school Zoom. Uh, we are doing the every other week thing now with the middle school. Uh, tomorrow, Monday at 8.30 is the high school Zoom. High school Zoom tomorrow. Uh, so make sure you're jumping on that. Uh, if you don't get the text messages that I send out, I send out text reminders about youth group and events um, and including those Zooms. Make sure you sign up for those. Uh, if you're middle school, send a text message uh, to 81010 and you're going to do the at symbol Hills MSM and high school, you'll send a text message to 81010 and it's the at symbol Hills HSM. And that way you'll get reminders, you'll get the Zoom link to log into uh, our Hangouts and that type of thing. Uh, so make sure you are doing that. Um, hoping, we, hoping we are on the home stretch here with doing these Bible Lives virtually. Hoping to have Bible Life in person again as soon as January. So keep praying to that end. Uh, we will be figuring out how to include um, our, our online uh, people for those in-person Bible lives when they happen, so uh, hopefully we'll have some info on that very soon for you. Let me go ahead and pray, and we will jump into Luke chapter 8 together. Uh, Jesus, we just pray uh, for our, our time here in Bible life this morning, that as we read your word, it would just reveal your truth to us, that we'd be encouraged by it, challenged by it, as we just read the story about uh, Jesus casting out a demon, that we would see um, God, the bigger picture of what's going on and who you are and, and why uh, Jesus speaking a word to a demon causes these evil forces to just obey him. And why we shouldn't fear that, we should uh, be in awe of it and submit our lives to Jesus uh, because of what he's done. Not just in casting out demons and this man in the story, but dying for us on the cross, raising the life so we can be forgiven of sins. Put us in your name. Amen. Uh, there's a saying, um, I don't think it's a saying we use a whole lot anymore, so you may not have heard of it. It's called, um, uh, you can't see the forest for the trees. And what that saying means is that when you're in the middle of a forest, all you can really see are these really tall, thick trees right around you. So you don't have a scope of how large the forest actually is. And uh, so you that saying is not actually talking about when you're in a forest. Um, it's trying to say that when there's a situation in life that seems to distract you so much, you're so focused on this one thing that's going on that you can't see everything else that's going on in your life. And that's what's going to happen to some of the people in our story today. Uh, so Jesus is traveling around. He ends up in a new town, and he meets a demon-possessed man. And we're going to pick up in Luke, tw uh, Luke 8, verse 28, and start reading from there to see what happens. It says, as soon as he saw Jesus, he shrieked, this is the demon-possessed man, and fell down in front of him. Then he screamed, why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Please, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. The spirit had often taken control of this man. Even when he was placed under guard and put in chains and shackles, he simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness, completely under the demon's power. Jesus demanded, what is your name? Legion, he replied, for he was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. Uh, there happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby, and the demons begged him to let them enter into the pigs. So Jesus gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and into the pigs, and the entire herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned. Pretty, pretty crazy story of what we have going on. We have this host of demons that's possessed this man. The people of the town have tried to 
uh, shackle this man with chains to keep him under control, and, and under the demon's strength, he breaks the chains and is, is roaming free, um, and has clearly been a burden to this town. And just with the spoken word, Jesus casts these demons out. Jesus even takes a little bit of mercy on these demons and allows them to go into the pigs as they request. Um, and all the pigs then plunge down the hillside and they die. And our first key point this morning is that evil has absolutely no power over Jesus. Evil has absolutely zero power over Jesus. Those demons could do nothing when Jesus showed up on the scene. Uh, he was in full control. And they pleaded with him and begged him to allow them to go to the pigs. They had no choice in the matter. Jesus did allow them, and so they were able to. But Jesus had full control. No evil force or entity has ruled over Jesus ever in any way. Um, we see that in the book of Job when Satan wants to uh, bring affliction upon Job because he claims that Job will turn from God if his life wasn't so good. He has to ask God's permission to do so. Even Satan himself has no authority unless God allows it to happen. Our second key point this morning is that demons require authority to be granted to them. Just as we talked about in Job, they require authority to be granted to them. Which means evil, whether it be demons or Satan, have no power in this world aside from what God gives them. He is the ultimate and only authority and power. And when this applies to us, when we think about it, Maybe you're not dealing with, I hope and assume, you're not dealing with a host of demons trying to take possession of your body. Uh, if you're a believer in Jesus, I firmly believe that that's not even possible because the Holy Spirit now lives inside of you. But there are storms, there are trials, there are difficulties that come in this life, and they seem insurmountable. They seem impossible. And that's where we get this saying, uh, where we, bring, we bring this saying, you can't see the forest for the trees into what we're talking about today. Because in the middle of the trials of life, in the middle of the storms, in the middle of the worst year overall we've ever experienced, we call 2020, sometimes we focus so much on the circumstances that life doesn't seem normal, and school isn't normal, and church isn't normal, and we can't go out in public anymore because it's just uncomfortable, and there's too many rules, and too many people, and there's this fear of this virus um, that's, that's uh, potentially going to make us sick, and that people are dying from, and uh, all these things that are just grabbing hold of us and causing us to focus on the trials and the circumstances of today, we sometimes get lost in those circumstances. We get lost in the trials of today, and we can only see those trials and those circumstances, and we say, God, what are you doing? Everything is falling apart. And sometimes we fail to see the bigger picture of what God has done and what God is doing, that the gospel still reigns supreme, that God is still fully in control over viruses, over evil, over politicians, over uh, social justice and whatever that looks like and whatever it means, that God is fully in control over all of these things. He knows what he's doing and he's working for good. You need to cast your cares, your hurts, your longings at the foot of the cross and let Jesus be your overcomer. Verse 34 when the herdsmen saw it, they fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon, soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been freed from the demons. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others how the demon-possessed man had been healed. And all the people in the region of the Gerasenes begged Jesus to go away. And leave them alone, for a great wave of fear had swept over them. Our third key point is that if we don't focus on what matters, we can miss out on the opportunity for God to work in our lives. See, so we have this group of people who had been fearful of this man possessed by demons and didn't know what to do with them, and now we have Jesus casting them out, and these people are left with a herd of dead pigs, which I'm sure they weren't thrilled about, and this man that they don't know what to do with because the only thing they know of him is being this demon-possessed menace running amok in their society. And Jesus standing there who had full authority over the demons. And instead of seeing the bigger picture, instead of seeing the forest 
in front of them the truth of what God is doing, that God himself had come to earth and brought all authority from heaven to forgive them of their sins through his own death and sacrifice, they instead only see the circumstance that if the demons were powerful and this man is more powerful, we should be afraid, and they're afraid of Jesus, and they want him to leave. They missed the point. They missed who Jesus was, and they missed an opportunity to spend time with God himself and have their eternity change forever. My question for you today is, what circumstances in your life are the trees that are blocking you from the forest? What things, whether it be sins you struggle with, circumstances that are not your fault, trials, what things today are standing in the way of you fully committing yourself to God and trusting what's going on in your life to be good because God made it good. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that happens to you is going to be happy and wonderful. We know there's hard things in this life. We know that that's reality. We also know that God promises he's working out all things for good. So even those hard things, even the devastating things in life, God is in the scope of eternity. It's going to work those things out for good. As Romans 28, 8, 28 says, for who? For, the, for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Do you love God? Do you trust Jesus? Or when the hard times come and God doesn't seem to be coming through and you can't see exactly what he's doing, do you ask him to leave? Maybe you don't do it outrightly, but we so often do it by abandoning our hope and our faith and trying to do things on our own, not trusting Jesus with our lives, not trusting him in the hard times, not trusting that he will come through. When the trials of this life come, how do you respond to the one who holds all authority over good and evil, over this world and beyond? God himself. As you pray through that today, as you think about that, I beg you to confess of the things that are not right. Confess of the sins in your life. Confess of the times when you don't trust God. And ask, his, ask him in his power through his spirit to give you the strength to trust him in all circumstances. Let's pray. God, I again thank you for Luke chapter 8 that we can read here together and be challenged by it. Thank you for the story of Jesus healing this man, showing us the authority that you carry, the, the might that you have, God. I pray that every student listening to this would be challenged in their faith to trust you more, to abandon the clinging to the hopelessness of this life and cling to you and your hope instead. And it's in your name. Amen. All right, guys.